We are officially starting off our first uh, Apotec uh, webcast, and I want to welcome our first uh, guest here today is Karen Bosch, uh, who's going to talk to us about creative uses of uh, apps with her students. So I'll let her introduce herself and, and tell us a little bit about your background, Karen, and your experiences in, in using uh, apps. So welcome. All right, thank you, and thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of your inaugural webcast. Um, I'm going to go into some screen sharing and put some slides up here, and hopefully this will work. So hang on a second. Uh, push some buttons. And all right, do you see my slide deck now? I do. All right, let me go into full screen. How does that look? Oh, that's beautiful. We're good. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with who I am, I am Karen Bosch. I'm a K-8 technology instructor in, at Southfield Christian School in Southfield, Michigan, which is just north of Detroit. And I teach in a fairly traditional computer lab setting. Uh, I've done that for most of the past 10 years. However, the last two years, um, because of an illness in our faculty, I also taught elementary art. And kind of the blend of technology and art, and then the advent of the, ad the iPads with the cameras kind of launched this thought in me that, you know, these iPads are an amazing creativity device. And so I spent a lot of time last year working with our students and with our teachers trying to see what can we create on an iPad, what can we make with our iPads. And so um, when Mike invited me, I've kind of got a growing repertoire of different slides and ideas and apps, but I thought what I'd focus in on are just examples of student projects, real student projects that our students have been doing and just kind of maybe spark your um, imagination and your creativity and some maybe some new things that you can try with your students. So my school, Southfield Christian School, has is a small private school. Our high school last year went one-to-one -one with iPads and so we're in our second year of that initiative. This year, the elementary school where I primarily work and also in the middle school, we have a set of 27 iPads that are shared amongst all the classes. However, last year when I was doing most of these projects, we started with five iPads, worked our way up till 10. And so most of the projects we're, you're seeing were not done by individual students, but were um, or with an individual student on an individual iPad, but actually were done shared, um, two kids on one iPad. And in a lot of cases, that kind of environment is really ideal, that collaboration over an iPad um, cuts teacher work time and helps them to kind of share their knowledge together. If one person gets stuck, another person can help them out. And we do also have a few iPod Touch devices that we've used for some of our projects. So as you look at the slides, you may see an iPod Touch rather than an iPad. But everything that I share today is something that can be done on an iPad. And I do have a lot of resources on a web page that I have online. If you go to tinyurl.com slash iPad create, I've built a site called Creative Aptitude. It has links and descriptions to all the apps that I'm going to share, plus a lot of other ones, and also links to projects. And I will have um, also a link to the extended version of this presentation that will have all of the stuff I show, plus a lot of other stuff as well. So if you're looking to look back and want to refer to something I've talked about, you can check that out. For me, the iPad is all about the tools, the cameras, the still camera, the webcam, the um, video cam, the fact that you can use it as a slate to draw on, you can take all, you can record audio, and then the fact that there's all these apps that make it so easy to develop something creative. Uh, and the fact that it's a one-stop place to go. 
Uh, teachers don't have to find the cords to download the pictures to the computers and then figure out another way to upload. In most cases, you can do all the steps from one app, and I find that's a huge time saver, and I find that teachers are a lot less intimidated than what they've had to do in the past when there's a lot of downloading and syncing and things like that. So the project I'm going to share with you, I'm going to share some photography projects, some drawing, some digital storytelling, some audio, and some video projects, and just tell you a little bit about them. For me, I think photography is kind of the start of doing multimedia um, projects. Um, a lot of times you have to have good photos to be a part of the project. But there's a lot of just simple things you could do with an iPad camera that will integrate with just almost any subject area that you're covering. These are just a few ideas of things that I have thought of that would work well with the camera. So one thing, um, this beginning of this school year, this is so simple and basic, but I think it's brilliant. Um, the iPads are perfect for having students document their learning. And our first grade teachers had set up centers, and they had these magnetic trays with little magnetic letters, and students were supposed to be working on building words. Of course, teacher is off in another area working with students, so how do you find a way to be sure that the students actually are doing what they're supposed to and not playing hockey with, you know, the little magnetic things over the tray? So the teachers have been giving the students iPods or iPads, set up their name on the tray, and then as they build the words, they just snap a picture of the word. Teacher can go back into the device later on in the day and see exactly what work the students have done. And I think that is just a perfect, simple way that teachers can use from very young age to older ages, having students use that camera to document what they're learning, what they're doing, show their projects, show their ideas. So that's just a real simple idea. I also think photography works great if you're doing projects that are in process and you need to have some way to refer back to steps. When I was teaching art, we did a project with apples and the students had to um, draw a picture of an apple and then take a few bites and draw another picture and then take a few more bites. And I knew that we would never get the project done in one sitting. And so, and the apples would get really cruddy if we tried to keep them over a week. So the students um, took pictures of each step of that process and then they had the photographs both to refer to on the iPad on the next week for their drawings. And then I also printed out the photographs in black and white so that they would have a nice reference for pencil drawings. So a lot of things, again, that I think you can do to just save what you are doing um, to be able to refer to later on. We also did some creative things with um, our apples when we were doing still lifes. When students were done with their pencil sketches, I let them use the cameras to take pictures of still lifes. They um, used bowls and cloth and the apples, photographed it, and then they pulled it into an app called My Sketch and turned them into pencil drawings. And so they could um, compare their own pencil drawing with this iPad generated pencil drawing, which was really quite fun and interesting. We also did some other things with um, photo filters and effects. We had another project where we were working on Van Gogh, and so we had sunflowers. And so they played around with an app called Be Funky and photographed the sunflowers and added lots of cool effects on with them. My favorite app for photo editing that just is kind of a basic all-in-one free app is called Fotler. I like it because it has basic tools that you need like rotating and adjusting the brightness and color. It also lets you add text. You can draw over top of your photos. You can add frames. Got some crazy stickers. And then they have a lot of really pretty photo filters. And so it's a really good way for students to get a um, feeling for how you can be creative with photography. I've always had this desire to learn how to use Photoshop, but you know there's a huge learning curve with Photoshop. And I find that now that I can do a lot of similar things on my iPad with these easy apps, you know, I really don't need Photoshop anymore. I can do it right on my iPad. 
So my middle schoolers in my multimedia class, we started doing some self-portraits. And they used the self-facing camera, and they used Fotler and just added some amazing effects onto the photos. Had a great deal of fun playing around with that. I think things like these pictures are, you know, really great for, you know, starting out creative writing and just, you know, getting, you know, personal self-image. I think students love that. We did some things then that we pulled all their different edits into um, a collage app. Um, the one we used was Pick Stitch, and so they could see the same thing four different ways. Um, collage apps also work great for um, doing a sequence, one, two, three, four, and showing the steps, or working on posters where you want to show maybe pictures of a country or an animal. So those, um, this, those kind of apps work great for that. And then kids start getting really creative when you let them go. Um, this was one student who used three different apps to edit her photo. Started with Fotler and added on little stickers onto the eyeballs to make them really intense. And then pulled it into my sketch to make the, it look like a pencil sketch. And then went into label box and added that title hidden. And you know, I look at this picture and it's like, you know, it tells a story. You could write a poem about this. It makes you think when you look at it. Um, so I think that you, when you give students tools like this on an iPad, um, their creativity is just um, can really be unleashed with their photography. And then there's the photo cams, photo booth, and then there's a lot of other cams out there that let you do the wacky effects. And we've had a lot of fun in class doing those. And you think, well, what can we do educationally with those? Well. Um, we used CamWow in the beginning of the school year. We were learning about pop art. We made a huge pop art wall. Every student got to take their picture with a front facing camera. And this um, time we used the CamWow app because it had a few more um, options for filters. Printed it all out. We had this lovely wall um, in our hallway. The kids all came after school, showed it to their mom and dad, looked for their photos, looked for their friends. Um, this was a great deal of fun and it's a great way to start out the school year, great for an open house. I also think those kind of apps are great for writing. Um, we have our um, preschool teacher has used CamWow and she has the students come up with some kind of sentence about what they see, like, you know, it looks like there's a rainbow on my head or I've got two heads. And then she prints that out in text. So the students, even though they aren't really reading yet, are starting to associate their words with written words with the picture. So again, a simple, fun way to use those fun effects on the camera. As students get a little bit older, again, they can be very creative. Um, our high school teacher last year um, had an assignment of a six-word story. And so they had to take a photo on the iPad and then pull it into any app that they wanted and tell a story about the beginning of school in six words. And so we have sleep versus homework, sleep always wins. We're in the bottom corner, iPad training, long seminars, so confused. So kids, again, getting a chance to combine photography with their creative writing. Um, awesome way to use the photography apps. So that's just a little overview of a few of the things that we've done with photography. Um, next, I'd like to talk a little bit about some drawing apps. And again, you may think drawing, well, that's just for art class. And a few of the examples will be with art class. But as I get a little farther in, I think you'll see some other ways that you can incorporate drawing tools into almost any subject area. So one app that I really like that's a nice free one is called Drawing Box. Uh, we were studying about different um, African art and African culture. And so we had made um, silhouette um, collages and paintings in class. And one of the things I like to have my students do when I was teaching art was when they were done with their picture that was assigned, I would say, OK, if you've got extra time, go to the iPad and see if you can replicate your drawing. I found that if I just told the kids to go and draw on the iPad, they just would scribble. But if you gave them you know, a specific assignment, they could come up with some pretty amazing things. So they did these with partners, painted in backgrounds, sunset backgrounds, and then with a solid black tool. 
um, put this the African silhouette with the animals and the trees over top. And they were beautiful. In fact, the iPad versions turned out much better than the ones that they had done um, with the uh, tissue paper and the paint. So uh, one example of how you can use an iPad to incorporate along with a subject area. Here's another app that we've used, very simple, called Wow Paint, another free one. And again, they were doing cardinals. You can see the picture up above, um, what it looked like in art class, and then the replication that they did with a partner, again, below. Um, just a lot of fun, and again, a good way for students to use their time when they get done. Then I did um, something I wanted to combine drawing with literacy. So my kindergartners, towards the end of the year, we used an app called Hello Crayons, another great free one. We um, did drawing, and I said, see if you can draw a picture that begins with a B. And so they worked with a partner and drew their pictures, and then after a few minutes, they held them up for us to see, and we looked at what all the pictures were. Um, a lot of fun. They had a great time with it. Pretty soon, I started noticing that they were not only just drawing the picture, but they were writing the word to go along with it. And it was one of those dumb moments like, okay, yeah, why didn't I tell them to write the word along with it? They figured that out. And so they started writing the words next to their picture. Um, sometimes they spelled them wrong, like you can see fish up at the top, which is so sweet. And so then we learned how to use the eraser to erase it and fix it. So um, a lot of things, particularly with literacy and early learning, the drawing works really well. Um, another thing as we got a little bit older with our fifth graders, um, we did something where we could pull in a phot photograph. They took photographs of each other and they were learning about human body systems so they drew their body system over top of their photograph which was absolutely fun, great learning activity. Um, we used Do Doodle Buddy on this one because it has the option of typing with text. A lot of the other drawing apps that I showed you don't have that option, and so this one maybe doesn't have the best drawing tools, but it does allow that um, typing with text. And a lot of different ways you could do this in science and social studies, you know, drawing over top and, and writing over top. Our French teacher in high school uses the drawing apps a whole bunch. And she will dictate a description to the students and has them draw what she says. And she can tell, you know, did they put on the blue glasses? Did they add freckles? Great way for checking vocabulary in foreign language classes. She also will use the drawing apps and have students take pictures of things and then draw over top of it and label different items. So works great for any of the world language classes. Another app we had a lot of fun with is called Type Drawing that kind of combines literacy and artwork. Um, this one you um, write in a word and then you pick a color and then you draw with the word. So we did outdoor pictures, so we've got grass, 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 house, 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 sky, 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 um, sun, sun, sun. Um, with younger kids, works great with their spelling words, their vocabulary words. Um, I think it also is one of those apps that would be perfect for using if you were doing foreign languages as well. And then there were a lot of 3D art apps that we experimented with. Um, it's amazing how well you can replicate an experience on an iPad. Um, there's a lot of things like um, sculpture. Um, or like here you can see a video of the kids doing a potter's wheel. I mean, there's no way you would want to deal with the mess of this in your classroom. Um, but you, maybe you're talking about, you know, using a potter's wheel in a um, social studies class. And to be able to give students a simulation like this is amazing. And it's so accurate, as you can see, what they're learning. It go, and it goes through the whole firing process. So these are some of the really cool free apps that we played around with last year that let you do things kind of in a 3D way. And then I put in the um, drawing app category, there's a whole group of apps that are called screencasting, kind of on the same idea as the Khan Academy um, um, screencasts that are with math. Usually they let you write and you record your voice at the same time. Oftentimes you can pull a picture in the background and draw over top of it. 
Uh, and these are some of the different ones that are out there. Some are excellent that are free. Um, some have additional features and you might have to pay a little bit for them. Our fifth graders, uh, when they were getting ready for their map testing last spring, the teacher assigned each student to have a certain topic of one of the skills they had learned. And they used the Show Me app to make math tutorials that then they could share with each other and the students could watch each other's tutorials as a part of the review. We had one boy in particular that thought this was the best thing ever. He loved math and just the chance that he could make these tutorials that other people could watch thought was awesome. So, um, so even the drawing, you think of math and drawing perhaps not going well together, but in this case these apps work great for that. And then finally, on the high school end, I thought I'd mention that there's a lot of apps that will let you do word maps. Poplet is a really nice app for doing this. Our high school teacher um, had the students doing comparisons of um, political cartoons. And so they were able to develop really nice word maps. And there's other word mapping apps out there as well as Poplet. And they all have slightly different features. But this is a good example showing how sophisticated you can build um, projects um, on the iPad. All right, my next category I'd like to talk to you a little bit about is digital storytelling. And for me, I'm calling digital storytelling anything where you've got some kind of an image and some kind of language where you're trying to convey a message or a story. Um, and so it could be written language, it could be um, recorded language, it could be both. It could be drawings, it could be photographs, it could be both. Photobabble is a great app. It, um, you can create a free account. It's a free app. And what it allows you to do is snap a photo and then record a one minute description to go along to the photo. And then you instantly upload it to your free account. So what I've done is I have all of our devices logged into Photobabble to our account. And it makes that publication so easy because when they hit publish, it's live on the internet. You don't have to go through any more steps. I use this with art to let students record art artist statements and reflections about their artwork. But again, I think any kind of work that students are doing, they can snap pictures of it and then record a one minute um, reflection on it. Um, a lot of different ways that you could use this app and it's a very easy one. And then digital storytelling, there's great apps out there that let you create storybooks. I think my favorite free one is called StoryKit. It lets you include photos. It has some very simple drawing tools. You can add text and you can add audio. When you view your stories on the iPad, they look like a book. But there is no way of transferring the, your story, your books, from one device to another. That's one down, downfall of this app. It does give you an option to upload your books to a free internet page. And it's very easy to upload. Um, the downside with that is it ends up being in squares like you see on the slide deck rather than looking like a book. So you kind of lose the feeling of the book. But the audio links still work and you can see everything. So it's a good option. We did this with paper mache penguins. Students wrote stories, um, recorded their stories, and we had all these great little storybooks that were both on our devices and then also online that people could view and listen to. My absolute favorite book creator, though, is called Book Creator. Um, it allows you to add text. You can add pictures from the camera roll. You can't take pictures in the app. It also lets you add video and you can record audio. It's one of the most flexible ones of all the book creating apps I've seen because you can move things around. And then I love that it gives you an option that you can export your book as an EPUB document. It will either go directly into your iBooks or you can put it in Dropbox. And from Dropbox, you can share the book with other people, including your parents. And so this is the one app our elementary teachers loved using. Almost every class built a book. Usually it was a collaborative book where each person um, contributed one page. And then um, 
it was published online. We have a collection of over a dozen books that are available online for people to download, and the parents love it. Here's a little clip you can see here. Let me see if I can play it. And then the thing that's so cool about this is the page turn. I mean, it really looks like a page. These pictures were done in kid pics, and it was just a project I already did. I just snap pictures of the printouts of the kid pics thing that we had done in the computer lab, pulled them all into Book Creator, and then we just added the audio as an extra touch. All right, Face Jack is another really wacky, fun app. It's one of these where you use dots to select the mouth on an image that you put on your iPad, either that you pull off the internet or that you take. And then you can record audio and the mouth of the image moves along with what you're saying. And tons of ways you can use this. Biographies, autobiographies, narratives, book characters, creative writing. We've had a blast using FaceJack. One thing we did was um, our fifth graders always research presidents. And so they wrote campaign speeches based on what they learned about their president. And then they recorded it in FaceJack as if they were the president. And you can see the president's mouth talking. Now, there may be a little bit of lag here on the video, but let me just play a little bit of this so you can see what it looks like. Hello, America. My name is Jenna Dwight Eisenhower. Or you can call me Ike. I want to be your next president. I want to go military. All right, you can kind of see with that tons of ways that you could incorporate that, particularly in social studies, I think, um, with history, creative writing. We did some art projects, and I thought, you know, let's add a little face jack to it. So we did line faces. And each student recorded a little clip about how they could be brave like a lion. So we added a little bit of character education into it. So let me play a little bit of this, of them talking about how they could be brave. I am brave like a lion when I snowboard. I am brave like a lion when I horseback ride. I am brave like a lion when I go on roller coasters. All right, so you get an idea of how that would come together. And so any kind of artwork that your students make, they could either make it on the iPad or make it just traditionally and take a photo of it. Here's another um, project that we did on Christmas at Christmas time on different characters from the Bible story. But you could use book characters for this. They used construction paper and chalk, made a beautiful portrait, and then they wrote a narrative where the character talked, and then we recorded it in FaceJack. Let me show you a little bit of that. Hello, I am an angel sent from the Lord. God chose me to go and tell the shepherds that Jesus had come down to earth. I sang to the shepherds of all right, and you get a little bit of an idea of that. I'm just giving you little snippets of it. If you want to see more of any of the projects, they're all, list on, uh, they're all listed in my um, Creative Aptitude website. There's a couple other fun ones that will let you do some similar things. Morpho, in particular, creates um, animated 3D faces from still images. They're a little bit creepy, but they're also kind of cool. So you may want to try that, and I think particularly older students, high school, would have a blast doing that. Then there's a whole collection of apps that are kind of animated talking stories. And these are a few of them that are out there that we've played around with. And these kind of apps, I don't think there's really a whole lot that's similar to this that you could actually do on a computer or do easily on a computer. Our favorite one, or at least my favorite one, is Puppet Pals. You do have to um, purchase the director's pass to really open up the flexibility for that. But if you do that, you can add your own backgrounds. You can add your own photographs as the characters so the students can become characters in the recordings they do. Uh, our fifth grade teacher did this um, with their literature circles. After they'd finished reading a book, one of their standards they were working on was finding the climax of the story. And so they had to create a, a cartoon video showing the climax. So they drew a background. They took their photographs, the ones in the wheelchair, they actually kind of leaned against the wall so that they could look like they were actually sitting there. 
And then they recorded the audio, and you just take your finger to move the characters around to get them to look like they are acting. So let me give you a little clip on this. The audio on this is not the greatest, but you'll get the idea of how creatively you can put this yeah. together. Hey, look, I can read this thing. Do you know where Ma and Pa are? No. All I know is that this is really 1996. Another example of how we uh, used this was in fourth grade when they were learning about different regions in the United States. So students downloaded pictures from the internet, um, had three different pictures of three different scenes, and then they recorded a script of their research where they worked as a tour guide. Now in this one, the person didn't move a whole lot, but you'll get to see that they're kind of sliding around um, as they're talking about the state. I am here to tell you about West Virginia. West Virginia's capital is Charleston, West Virginia. It was admitted to the Union on June 20th, 1860. All right, and I think you get the idea of how that goes, too. Forgive me for going fast. I just want you to get a little taste of all these projects. I've got a lot to show. And then sock puppets is one of these wacky things where the socks actually talk along with what your face or what your voice is saying, kind of similar to Face Jack. Our second grade teachers love this. And they used it for, you know, kind of boring content, you know, math facts and vocabulary words. But the kids loved reviewing those things if they could do it in sock puppets. So here's a little example of how the students um, did their review of some of their math facts. And they have these great little helium voices. So, and they've had a blast doing that. Um, and again, that's free, but if you um, purchase, there's extra features if you want to extend the recording or save the recordings that you would need to purchase. And then there's a ton of little comic apps out there from very simple to very complex. Our third grade used this to go online, download pictures of animals from different animal groups, and then made comics where the animals were talking and sharing different characteristics about them, like, you know, I breathe with gills or I have scales. They also did another project with famous African Americans and, again, downloaded pictures from the internet and then pulled them into a comic and had the person talking about themselves and worked very nicely. Again, this was one that they did with a group and um, they were able in third grade to figure out how to do this with a little bit of instruction very easily. So that's an overview. There's a lot of great ideas out there for digital storytelling. Then let's talk a little bit about just strictly doing things with audio. There is no voice memo app on the iPad like there is on an iPhone. I discovered that pretty quickly in. These are two apps that I've used if I just want to record um, audio, audio memos, and iTalk. iTalk is kind of nice because it does have a feature where you can wirelessly send your recordings, and I think if I remember correctly, it goes directly into GarageBand. And a lot of different ways that you can use um, just plain audio recording um, from fluency and vocabulary, readers, theaters. Commercials are great. Um, again, to be able to take things that you're learning and creatively transform that into commercials. So we learned some about national parks, did a little bit of research, and then students recorded a commercial for their national park. So here's a little audio snippet. Hi, Mom. Would you like a full day spa? Oh yes, work was exhausting. Then come to Hot Springs National Park. Bring your kids along because they will have a blast. Yay! Another project that we did at Thanksgiving time was to see if we could build some wraps. And there are apps out there that will make like little wrap patterns. One of them that's free is called I Am Ringtones. And we did this with two devices. On the iPod, the students played in I Am Ringtones and made up their little um, beat pattern. And then they um, wrote up a rap about what they were thankful for. And then we used the iPad to record them. They played the 
little beats on the iPod and then they recorded their voice over top of the beats to make their little raps. And I wasn't sure how this would work, but actually in about 30 to 40 minutes, they were able to make their patterns, um, make a little rap and record it. And some of them turned out really cute. This is one example of one. And I like that one. In fact, for days I was going around singing, uh, 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 yeah. So, they, and they did a cute job with that. Again, things like that, taking maybe um, some uninteresting content like math facts or something that students need to perhaps memorize like grammar rules and putting it into a wrap is a fun, fun project for students. I particularly love the app called Audioboo. You can make a free account um, and it will work either online or on your device. And it is such a simple way to record audio and get it published online without having to do any transfer. It lets you record files up to three minutes long. Um, and it is very simple to teach students how to do. Usually I can teach one person and that person teaches the rest of them. I've used it personally just at the end of lessons and I say, okay, we've got three minutes. Tell me what you learned new that you never knew before about this topic. And I just kind of run around the room with my iPad or iPod or my iPhone and I record the students. When I'm done, I type in a title hit publish and boom, it is live. I can then take that file, either link to it or embed it into my blog. We took it even one step further um, with art and um, writing stories and then creating a listening gallery. So we did several projects. Um, kindergartners did pink pigs. My fourth graders did superheroes where they made the pictures and art. And then they came up with little stories to go along with it. The kindergartners just told me. Um, the fourth graders actually wrote it ahead of time. We recorded their stories in audio boo. I did it with the kindergartners. The fourth graders did it by themselves. And then when I was done, all of the audio files are online. And then I was able to use an app, um, and I think the one I used was called KWub. There are quite a few out there. And I linked the audio file to the QR code, printed them out, put them on the, um, their artwork, and then students during art class were able to go out in the hallway, scan each other's code, and listen to the story, just kind of like you do in an art gallery. Now, I have all the steps for this process. If you go to my resource website, I've got the whole thing written out in a PDF that you can download. But students love this. My fourth graders I did this, have done this twice now. And I found the second year they were highly motivated to create beautiful art and write amazing stories and come up with interesting characters because they knew the rest of the school would be out there scanning the codes and listening to their stories. Highly motivating when you give students an audience like that. And then even parents coming down the hall at picking up their students after school would go take their phone out and would scan the codes and listen to it. So great activity, really nice to do. Um, a little extra effort, but not overly hard, and great result from it. My name it. is Karen. My, my pig name is Sparkle. She likes to eat hot dogs, and she likes to play on the trampoline. And that's just an example of one of the little pig, pig pig stories that the kindergartners came up with. Lots of imagination. Another app that we've had fun with is Songify. Songify lets you talk, and it returns. Uh, it will transform it into a song or a rap. Again, take kind of dull content and let students do something fun and creative with it. We did this with creative, with uh, computer lab rules last year and they songified them. Here's a little snippet of what that sounds like. And then there's GarageBand. 
GarageBand on the iPad is amazing. You can um, record your voice, you can record music, you can um, record audio, you can make your own music. They have smart instruments that make it sound like you actually can play a piano or a guitar even if you can't. And, um, and what's nice is you can combine those things together. We did an activity, some of the middle schoolers, where they took Bible verses and recorded them and then made music out of um, to put underneath it using some of the instruments, uh, smart instruments and the loops on the iPads. I think you could do this very nicely with poetry, would be beautiful. Here's a little snippet of what that sounds like. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him, nothing is made that is made. Oops, excuse me, let me back it up. So again, that's a little bit of a snippet of what you could do with audio. And again, I think you can do this from very simple to very um, complex and sophisticated things that students can develop um, in GarageBand. And then there's the video apps. Um, a very simple way of using it is what I call the video confessional booth, like the reality style programs where everyone has to talk to the camera and tell their feelings. Well, use that front-facing camera to let students, again, rec record reflections about, upon what they're learning and what they have been doing in school. Um, easy activity. Don't have to spend a whole lot of time, but just recording um, their reflections is awesome. This is something that um, one of our teachers did with the middle schoolers, they were learning about different Bible verses, and so the student had to record a, a reflection. And um, they actually added a little extra in it. They added titles and some music in iMovie. But again, just front-facing camera, very simple. Hello, Saints. It is Paul here, the sick kid in this nasty prison. The rats are crawling everywhere. We're even fighting for the same food. But anyway. And I think that kind of thing works well for dramatic readings and just being very creative and expressive, expressive with language. I think you can do very simple but easy things. I think the video works awesome for science experiments. Um, instead of having your traditional lab report on paper, why not use an iPad to record the whole process and document it? So this is our high school physics teacher. Um, doing uh, an experiment on are you taller standing up or lying down? And you can see how the students put that together in um, iMovie. You can see they use um, record different data information, but you can actually see what the process was and see them discovering the results. Another video app, iMovie is great for editing. I also like Splice because it's free and it's a very easy way to quickly combine a bunch of um, clips together. You can add simple titles, you can also add in transitions and record audio and add music. Um, very simple but really a nice app. I think it's a great idea to let students become the videographers for your class. If you're doing a great activity, um, instead of you taking the video, assign that as a job for students. So I had in my art class would assign certain students to record video of the project in process and then I would invite them to come in at recess and in about a half an hour I was able to to teach them how to use Splice to edit all their clips together and put in a title and so on. So here's a little example of how we did it in art class, but again, I think you could do this in, you know, almost any subject matter. If you have something cool going on, let the kids take the video of it. Video. 
and they loved doing that. Again, it was um, we didn't do anything fancy with it. I think if I had a little more time, I would have them record maybe an audio track underneath it to tell, you know, this was step one, step two, step three. You certainly could do that in Splice, but just even the experience of being able to learn how to edit clips together and put in music and put in title was a great experience for them. I've also had fun using Silent Film Director. Um, it is kind of fun because it lets you record in old-fashioned effects. We did computer lab rules with the first graders. Actually, I did the recording with this. But I've seen some really neat things that people have done with older students where they're doing things for history to use these old-fashioned effects to um, be able to um, you know, make a, picture, a video that looks historical. And actually, I just remembered, I think they've changed the name on this recently. I think it's no longer silent film director. I think it's called Vintagio. And then, as high school students with our one-to-one, -one, you know, they are getting even more sophisticated with how they use this. So, this was a persuasive writing activity from English class. But instead of writing it in paper, make a commercial. And so, this student made a combination of both iMovie and silent film director in their in her movie that was persuasive. So I'll show you a little clip of that as well. Are you tired of cheap, unstylish, and uncomfortable shoes? It's time to put your feet out of their misery. And you can see just a lot of creativity. When you give students the tools that have, um, have a device that has all these creativity tools, I mean, they just can start really coming up with really great and imaginative ways of being able to present information. And, you know, commercials, very 21st century, you know, being able to do it where you're not just thinking about the writing, but thinking about the visual aspect as well. I also like using Animoto. It's a great way to let students just snap pictures of their projects and then I can throw them together into a little video. These were some frames that they did about their personality. They took pictures of each other holding the frame and then I built the little music video that goes along with it. And Animoto is kind of fun because it makes it look cool. And you don't really have to do any work. It adds all the effects for you. You've got a lot of different variety of music that you can use. And be sure you go and get the educator account because you get a full account that has a lot more features to it. And then there's time lapse. I think time lapse is really fun to do with your students to watch the process of something being built. Great with art projects. I think would be amazing to do with science experiments. Um, just a lot of cool things that you can do with the time lapse. We played around with this with my middle schoolers just to see, um, you know, on a simple level what they could do to do time lapse. Um, and we didn't really particularly even do a story. We just wanted to see what they could do in their first experiment. And it was really a lot of fun and they loved doing it. Then my final, I think this is my final tool, is I love the Vimeo app. Our school uses Vimeo as the place that we house our school videos. YouTube's blocked. Um, but I have Vimeo on all of my devices. They are logged into our school account. And so when we finish one of these projects, whether it's a digital storytelling project or it's a video project, we save it to the camera roll. And then I can directly upload it to our Vimeo account using the app. I don't have to do any chords, any syncing it back to my computer. It just automatically uploads and makes my life a whole lot easier with projects to do it that way. Oops. And so that's kind of a very quick overview of some of our best projects from last year. Again, this is my resource page, tinyurl.com, iPad Create, and my contact information. Um, I hope that you were able to get a few new ideas of some things that you can do with your students um, on the iPad. And so that is the end of my presentation. Hello there. <laughs> so um, are there any questions or any other things you would like to add in? I'm more, I think, more a statement. Uh, 
Karen, you, I think what's great about this is you've shown so many, uh, of course, I know your focus is a lot on, on writing and, and art and a combination, as you said in the very beginning of the webcast here, but I think it's great how many examples you showed of being creative in all content areas, whether it's science, mathematics, uh, a, a world language of some kind, um, and, and such a well-documented variety. So we are very grateful that you were able to share so many great ideas. Uh, obviously, much of it your work, but obviously you collaborated and got a lot of resources and ideas from other colleagues around your school. So I think it's really nice that hopefully everyone can find something here. Um, and as you pointed out, you're doing these in your subject area, but I think they're universally applied. I saw many things that I could use in, in my classroom or pass on to colleagues to say to use in their classroom. I think that's great. Good. Oh, Karen, I just wanted to thank you. It's, um, you've shared really the best apps that are out there in really wonderful practices. And it was wonderful being able to see how you use those because, you know, we all know that there are millions of apps out there, but the, the important part is being able to have those examples so that other teachers can start becoming inspired and, and thinking about how to do the same thing in a different way. And I think that, you know, your videos, although you said you didn't really, you didn't have a chance to show them all, it, it they're amazing. And it really gives us a great idea of the whole concept of the project. So thank you for that. Oh, you're, my pleasure. And I'm glad not only I could show some of the things that I did, but show off some of the great works that my colleagues have been doing too. You know, I kind of push them along and then, you know, they, it's amazing what they can come up with as well. So I'm very proud of the things that they've done and that our students have done. And it's also a learning process. We learn from each other and we learn by, by sharing. And if we don't share these and we don't see what other people are doing, we can't start imagining different ways of doing what we're doing. So that's uh, it, being able to share. It's incredibly powerful and it's um, also a wonderful resource and it shows, you know, that you guys are doing awesome and, and I hope that we can catch up someday. Sounds good. Thank you very much. All right, so uh, I think we'll wrap it up here. And like I said, we have been recording this uh, Hangout, so it will be live on the uh, on the Apotech channel. So if people hopefully tune in later, they'll be uh, coming back to your website and going from there. So we had a little we had a little delay in the beginning, but I think it, it worked out really well. And and uh, thank you again, Karen, for your time. And uh, we will be back uh, next month and with another another wonderful uh, guest to talk about great uses of uh, apps and iPad and so on and the classroom. So thank you again, Karen, and My everyone pleasure. else. Thanks we are uh, we are signing off. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank bye you. Bye. See you guys later. Bye bye.